people go, manager, I move up to the next level. Can y'all still hear me? If I help four more people go manager, I move up to another level. And so um, manager, it takes four business partners and $500 in volume, $500 in premium sold, volume sold. So that's manager. So when I, I knew what the building block was, the core rank, I got myself like I was brand new and got myself the core rank. Then I started launching others to the core rank. And that got me to the top position again, requalified. And then that factory started kicking in. And it was like every week I was launching somebody new to the core rank. I had a core rank factory. And through the stories, this all happened with me and new people. I said, I am going to go executive director, which was the level I was looking to get to with a full-time income. I'm going to go executive from scratch like I'm brand new, not counting any production from my existing people. Y'all hear me so far? And so I led by example again. I'm going to prove the system right. Are y'all seeing this principle again? I'm going to prove the system right. I'm going to launch myself, relaunch myself all the way to the top position again of that full-time income. Well, it inspired, remember that word? Because I was leading by example, it inspired Pam who said, wait a minute, you're not leaving me behind. I want to do that too. I want to get to five to 10,000 a month too. What did you do again? How are you launching these people? She started launching people, right? Went to the top position. Letitia started launching people, went to the top position. Michael went, started launching people, went to the top position. Don started launching people, went to the top position. Pam led to someone else, um, Ms. Davis, who went to the top position. Um, Letitia uh, led to um, someone else as well, Dr. Jackson, who went to the top position. Uh, Dr. Jackson led to somebody else, Mr. Smith, who went to the top position. Michael led to someone else, Alfred, who went to the top position. By the way, Ms. Davis went to top position following my system within about six months. Um, same Dr. Vangela relaunched and did it in, I think, about six months, too. She led to Daniel Smith. He almost did it in 30 days. He was one application short that didn't process to the next day of doing it in his first 30 days, but still knocked it out in his first 90 days. Top position. Alfred followed my system when in the first six months. And then Cindy, Coach Cindy Soto, who's on the live right now, she came in, went to the top position in the first six months as well. And so, boom, that took us to Platinum Executive Director, which is where the six figures and beyond is earned in a company. Went past six figures. I got massive momentum going. Got uh, uh, one first place in our company's recruiting contest and top three and another recruiting contest in the entire. Would y'all like to learn more about the leadership development cycle? So, first of all, tell me what you all see in this. Any light bulbs come on or a question you have for me about what you see here? And what I just shared. What do you hey, see coach. here? Coach. Yes, sir. Hey, I like where you said leading by example and how other people are inspired. And that's what we have to do is inspire people as leaders. They won't go nowhere if we don't help them expire, you know, bring out what they had, the potential they have into them when they see us leading by example, that brings them out also. Turn back to you. Got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who else? Um, I'll go. Um, duplication. What about it? Uh, yeah, just duplicating yourself, and then they, they would duplicate themselves. Very well because said. You got it. It all starts with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Who's next? I'm just curious, the names that are, you're filling in on the chart, are you just filling, you're not filling it in with people that you recruit, you're specifically filling that in with the people that want to build with you? Good question. It starts with people that I recruit. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, 
everybody's a candidate. <laughs> um, because I'm looking for the top, in my mind, I'm looking for the top 10 people in each leg. If I'm brand new, there's nobody in each leg. It's just me. So when I recruit the first person, let's say that person is Pam, then her name goes on there until she removes herself <laughs> from the list because she's not active or not coachable or not hungry. And then she removes herself. But my goal is to find whoever I can find through her, one, to help solidify her in the business, but two, to find who I'm looking for. See, I'm not dependent on any one person. And I'm teaching my team not to be dependent on any one person. I'm not bringing somebody in and then just sitting back and hoping and praying, I hope this is the one so I can stop. No, there's no stopping. It's a rhythm. It's an ongoing rhythm. It's a lifestyle. That's why we do it. We keep it fun. We keep it simple. And we let it flow so that there's no, you know, sitting back and waiting for somebody to hatch, you know, like an egg. No, it's we're, we're looking for a person through a person. We're looking for people through a person. It's the same mindset with the referral approach. Even when they come into the business, you're not just looking for that person. You're looking for who they know. And you're looking for who they know. And you're looking for who they know. In fact, a recruit is not really a recruit until you help them get a recruit. Very important. A recruit is not a recruit until you help get them a recruit. It's called tap rooting, going deep down a leg, finding leaders deep down a leg. A leg is not a leg until you help them build a leg. <laughs> Right? If you have a level called executive director, an executive director team is not an executive director team until you help them get an executive director team. Right? A platinum leg is not a platinum leg until you help them get a platinum leg. Whatever the titles are in your business, you're looking for people through people, through people, through people, through people. One day, you're going to have more than 10 people in this one leg. And you're going to always identify who are the top people you want to mentor and coach, whether it's in groups or whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, there's some people I'll invest 15 to 30 minutes a week with because they're serious, they're committed, they're consistent, they're practicing the millionaire schedule with me. I'm willing to pour into them. I've learned, as I said in my email, I've learned to match um, how much I'm willing to invest with a person based on how much they're willing to invest in themselves. I didn't learn that in my first few years. I wasted a lot of time spending time with people that didn't even value my time. Right, or they just weren't ready uh, for it. So it wasn't even their fault. But we're looking for people through people through people. Your best person is gonna come through that person. Your next best person. But one day you're gonna have 20 people in this leg. You wanna have the top 10 people. What if you help the top 10 people get into the consistency program? Right, what if you help the top 10 people get into a rhythm with their five to 500 to 1,000 a month? You're creating a leadership factory where you're, you're finding talent. You're identifying talent, and then you find who's worth, who's ready to be developed. Does that make a little bit more sense? Awesome. Coach Cindy. I, I was just going to share, Coach, that until I learned this, um, I was spending so much time, I call it the Kim approach. I need to keep it moving. If they're not interested, if they're not getting activated, keep it moving, keep drilling in, keep tap rooting that I know you spent years, um, in, in doing that, but I learned it quicker than by, by, uh, um, applying what you have taught us. And that is if they're not going to be active, just keep it moving. You need to go find that and raise your leadership lid, go find that person that is going to be um, the person that you need to work with and spend your time with. Absolutely. And you learned it quickly. Um, Coach Cindy Soto, she, her first week, heard it, no experience in this industry whatsoever um, or a success in the industry, um, came in, said, I'm not a salesperson, 20 years law enforcement. Uh, I'll get the product, but I don't know about the business. I said, if you're not a salesperson, you're perfect for my system. <laughs> because I'm not looking for salespeople. Um, and she trusted me and came in, uh, let me launch her. I said, how would you like to put your first thousand dollars in your pocket within your first week or less? Are you up, you up for a challenge? She said, yes. I said, I wanna challenge you um, to invite, send out uh, 300 text messages 
Before I said that, I said, would you be willing to carve out three hours to invite a bunch of people to a Zoom? She said, yes. I said, how many people do you have in your cell phone? How many people do you have in your social media? We identified way more than 300 people that were in her networks. And I said, all right, with that three hours that you said you invest, I want you to just take that time to send 300 people a simple text message that says, hey, what are you doing on a blank day at blank time? What are you doing Thursday at six o'clock? Can you get free? It's me sending. And she did it. She sent that text message to about 300 people. She had about 30 people on her first Zoom, 10% on her first Zoom. Out of those 30 people, we got her the core rank. We put her first thousand dollars in her pocket plus bonuses. She made over eighteen hundred dollars from her first four days work. And we launched her to core rank. And then she was able to take that momentum and start showing other people how to do the same thing. And that's the core rank factory. And she went to the top position in the first six months with no experience. Bravo, bravo, bravo. And now is continuing to do the same thing. She didn't even know what she was doing right. <laughs> She's so new but she was coachable and willing to, to be consistent. She didn't realize you, you're doing it right. And we went fast. And so it was the same cycle. If you're wondering how to launch a person, remember the pipes? All we did was identify how many contacts she had for prospects. How many contacts do you have in your phone? How many do you have on Facebook? How many do you have on Instagram? Hundreds and hundreds, thousand plus. Okay, perfect. So you got plenty. <laughs> all right. So now all you need to know is what to say to invite them. What are you doing on Tuesday at seven o'clock? That's super important. Can you get free by phone or Zoom? It's me, Cindy. <laughs> That's it. Text message, copy, paste, change the name. But she personalized it. That's why I asked her if she was willing to carve out three hours. Right? I, that started with 100. I started challenging people. I said, hey, I dare you to send 100 text messages in the next hour just to invite to this one Zoom presentation. A bunch of people took the challenge. Most of them had 10% show up, 10 guests. I said, wow, that was only an hour. I, I took way more time than that when I was getting started and launched. And I said, okay, I dare you to take two hours and send a text message to 200 people. Same text. What are you doing tomorrow at 7 o'clock? Uh, Hey, George, what are you doing tomorrow at 7 o'clock? Can you get free by phone or Zoom? It's me, Cindy. People took that challenge, started sending 200 texts, and about 10% showed up, 20 guests. <laughs> and then you still have the other 180 that couldn't make it at that time to follow up with, and now they're curious. And then the third uh, sweet spot I found, it was about three hours. Most people said, I can cover out three hours to invite. What do I need to do? And I said, I dare you send out 300 texts. And a bunch of people took up the challenge and most of them had about 30 guests on their first Zoom. Some didn't have as many because maybe they didn't have as many relationships nurtured. Or maybe they've tried some things in the past and they've invited a bunch of their folks to that. That's okay. I, we still have a system to show them how to have never run out of people. We went over that earlier, right? But most people that had regular relationships, um, guess what? They had about 10% show up to the first Zoom. I was just... Uh, influential enough to challenge them to do it. As a leader, we got to be okay and we got to get comfortable challenging people to do it. But you know why most people aren't comfortable enough to challenge someone else to do it? Because they haven't challenged themselves to do it yet. And I've challenged myself to do way more than that before. I challenged myself to make a list of 600 people before. I sat down and wouldn't stop and I got 600 plus people's names written on paper using memory joggers and then I went through it to find a bunch of folks. One time I needed to relaunch my business. I had a lot of success that I finally got momentum going in 2004. And then my top leaders were uh, focused, uh, moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, because I was a college student. We were college students and uh, we had a big team growing at Xavier University at the time. I got a lot of my practice, all of my practice in college because I was a college kid, 19 years old when I started, sophomore in college at Howard University in DC. Well, we got to getting this model going so well, we were recruiting hundreds of people. And then uh, it started growing to California and in different places. Well, um, 2004, we got to the point we were recruiting 200 people a month. Uh, we had people hitting the top position every month. And then in 2005, Hurricane Katrina came and wiped it all out. 
found myself in the negative, tens of thousands of dollars in the negative. People are looking at me like, you should quit. I mean, I don't know how you're going to recover from this. But I have the born CEO mentality. And I don't quit. Circumstances don't make me quit. I don't care about circumstances. Look, when I get a vision, and I just tell you how it, how it flows for me, when God shows me a vision, and I see my purpose, I see my vision, I see something I'm going after that's working. I already know that along the way, there are going to be ups and downs. There are going to be tough times. There are going to be challenges. But it doesn't change the end of the story. I already know how the story ends. When you've got a vision, you know how the story ends. You just decide this is how the story is going to end. I don't care what tosses, what turns and twists take place along the way. That just makes the story exciting. The story you're going to tell about how you overcame those obstacles to your massive team one day. The story you're going to tell about how you went through some things, but you were able to overcome it. And they can too. The story you're going to tell about the stories that almost made you quit, made you discouraged, but how you decided to stick and stay. And you're so glad that you did. You already know the end of the story. You know they're going to be twists and turns along the way like any good movie. Live your life like a movie worth watching. Live your life like a book worth reading. That's the born CEO mentality. And so I found myself watching it all seem to crash down in 2005. Had the foundation going. This was finally working. And then, boom, Hurricane Katrina, most of my leaders, my top leaders, were in New Orleans. <laughs> Some of them had moved to New Orleans. Boom, everything went away, almost. But guess what was still the same? My schedule, my millionaire schedule. I was still consistent. I was still in the rhythm. I still had new people coming in that didn't know anything about what was happening with Hurricane Katrina. I have people coming in that weren't in that state. Are y'all getting me so far? And so new people were still coming in and I decided I needed to relaunch. Here's what I did. I had taken out the memory joggers. I said, all right, I need to recruit 10 people. I need to do double digit recruiting. Remember, you need 10 recruits just to find one or two or three that are ready, ready to do something. So I said, all right, I'm gonna make a big, huge list and I'm start thinking about everybody I know from the past, school, elementary school, middle school, high school, jazz music, college, all these people, categories. I got all these categories written down. How many people in these categories? I came up with 600 names. I started searching through Facebook to see how can I get in touch with these people that I don't have phone numbers for. And I narrowed it down to 100 people. So I had 100 prospects that I was able to reach out to. I invited all 100 prospects to meet with me. Out of the 100, I was able to meet with 30 of those 100. And out of the 100, I was able to enroll 11 new associates, distributors in that same month. 11 recruits in one month. Out of the cycle. Y'all see the cycle? The same cycle. I just did it faster. So this is how you launch somebody. You speed it up. I did it faster. Out of those 11 people, six of them, I, we did the game plan, and six of them allowed me to do a presentation for them to help launch them. And out of those six, we enrolled enough customers and other distributors that I was able to qualify for the top position, not even counting anything else that happened outside of that group. The, me and my new people. Just between me and my brand new people, I qualified for the top position, not including anything that happened in my existing team. Y'all get this mindset? Leading by example. That's how you launch. You just do it faster than most people are willing to do it. When I launched Coach Cindy, she made identified 100 prospects. Didn't even have to physically write them down right away. They were already in her phone and social media. She just went straight to the inviting. So many people respond to text messages or social media messages now. Copy, paste, change the name. Copy, paste, change the name. Out of her 300, she had 30 show up on her presentation. One Zoom. One day. That was way faster than me. We didn't have Zoom back then when I did this. That was 30 people the whole month that I presented to. She had 30 people on one Zoom. Out of those 30 people, we recruited, we signed up 10 plus people, got her to core rank, put $1,000 in her pocket, and then found the people that we can launch. Y'all see how the cycle never changes? Old school, new school, virtual, or not virtual. 
What do you all see in this story of launching like a leader? What do you take away from this launching? How to launch? Uh, 